Hey, this is Marcello for the Warlocks Domain, and we're sitting here with Peter Steele and Johnny from Typo Negative right now, right here in Seven Willow Street in Port Chester, New York. Congratulations, first of all, on the success of your new album. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I want to ask you, this is your fourth album, am I correct? This is our third album. Uh, we also have an EP out, The Origin of the Feces. Um, first one was a Slow, Deep and Hard. Slow, Deep and Hard. That That's came Origin of the Feces. Which was a live album, right? The alleged live album. And then was Bloody Kisses and now October Rust. You're on a roll, man. I know. There we go. I got my good for sources. Anyway, um, let me ask you first, uh, what was the inspiration behind October Rust, the whole theme of October Rust? The inspiration was trying to get out of our contract as soon as we can. So this way, the quicker that we did the album, the quicker I'd be out of it. And uh, I wouldn't have to make any more Roadrunner Record Company people rich. So now what's the deal after you've made October Rust, what's going to happen? I think we have three more albums, is it? Two more records and two know. singles. I really don't, I don't want to think about it, but <laughs> I, I, I was, of course, trying to be funny by, by answering that question. The, <coughs> sorry, it didn't work as usual. The, uh, you're, you're two, you're two in a... Is that what you said, the motivation? Well, what was the whole, the whole, the, what gave you guys the idea to make October Rust, the whole theme behind October Rust? I mean, the, you mean, the, your whole concert has this whole theme of, you know, the season of October, the fall season and everything like that? Well, all, all four uh, band uh, members have, have always liked nature. I mean, not, you know, not that we're uh, like avid campers or pagans or anything like that, but, um, you know, we, we do respect nature. We, we all like animals. And fall happens to be my favorite season. And as far as the, the songs go, I didn't really have any concrete ideas. I just uh, followed my heart and followed my That's always good. Um, uh, let me ask you something. Uh, uh, first of all, a lot of people have been asking us to ask you this. Uh, how did it feel playing with Howard Stern? Well, I haven't even met the man. You just went into a studio and just recorded, and then he just threw on his tracks afterwards? Yes, it was uh, totally separate. Uh, you know, we, we just went in and did our job, and the whole thing was put together by someone else. Mm -hmm. Now, you also have a track on the Mortal Kombat um, soundtrack, and uh, do you enjoy getting, I mean, with your tracks being on these movie CDs, do you feel that gives, you know, a greater range to, your, to getting more people to uh, listen to you because you're on a well, kind of... I mean, that's, you know, that's the reason why, why we jumped, jumped at the chance to... Uh, do the Howard Stern soundtrack because of the exposure. Right. So they actually at, did you actually did they actually come and ask you if you would do a track or? You know, I have a really good idea. Why don't you sit in the middle between me and Johnny? Okay. So where you can ask him some questions too. Okay, that's a good idea. So I'll move. Uh, I'm a little wide, so you're gonna have to watch it. All right. So here we go. This is better. He even pre-warmed the seat up for you. Ah, nice. Keep Ooh. the hemorrhoids nice and warm. Ah, those are already good. You know. Preparation H takes up care right away. Um, so what I was just saying is, so what happened with the Howard Stern today? Uh, Johnny, you want to answer this question? Answer this, Johnny. What's the question? Uh, with the deal with the Howard, the track off the Howard Stern uh, album, did they approach you for that, or did they? Did you uh, hear that it was going around and offer your services? No, they approached us. They approached us. Yeah. Same thing with the Mortal Kombat. Same thing. I don't know, okay. Um, another question is, uh, you guys are around, kind of around your area. Uh, you guys grew up in the New York area, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, uh, New, York. Brooklyn New York. So this is only 75 miles from home. This is only relatively, seven, close. relatively close. Okay, we're, we're so um, what what do you feel about uh, where did you guys really start out from? Where where were your roots from in Brooklyn? Roots meaning what what kind of music? Or yeah, the the scene around Brooklyn because you know Brooklyn is really big hardcore, you know New York hardcore well, stuff. Well, to make a long story short, I I think it's safe to say that all all four band members were influenced by the same three bands. And that was Black Sabbath, The Beatles, and Kiss. Can you concur? Absolutely. All right. So that's true. And uh, when, where did you guys get your first break? Uh, that would be in Germany when, it, when, I, when a case fell on my foot. That was my first break. <laughs> Boom. Thank you. I was going to hey. say mine were my fingers at, at nine years old. I should uh, let's, let's make the question a little bit easier. Where did you guys get discovered by the record companies and first get signed? Now, this is... Uh, Another long story that I will try to edit. I, I used to be uh, in a band called Carnivore. Carnivore was the, f the name of Typo before you? Yeah. Not, not really true. Uh, Carnivore had myself plus two, two other members. Mm -hmm. uh, after Carnivore broke up, 
um, the record company bound me to contract because as, as the songwriter, they began to spell Peter Steele with a dollar sign and they did not want to let me go. This is still Roadrunner, right? Yes, and so when we formed uh, Typo Negative, we were actually signed before the band was even formed. So you're under contract, so you just made, made the band out of the contract, right? Well, we didn't really think of it like that. I mean, we, we formed the band because we wanted to, uh, to you know, play with each other, but um, we were hoping that we could get onto a you know, different uh, label, mm -hmm. but that was not possible just because I was bound and uh, they would not let me go. Right. How were you approached uh, to, do, to join Typo Negative? I approached them. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh, I, I worked for the band a couple of times, uh, you know, like uh, drum tech and driver and things like that. And I was, I was friends with the guys for quite a number of years before, the, before Sal left. And then when Sal left, I was one of the first people to hear about it. And I called up <coughs> the other members of the band and asked them if they, would, if they were going to continue as typo negative to consider me for an audition. Not, that's not the absolute truth. <laughs> Uh-oh, here it comes. And the absolute truth was I, I went to get my car fixed. And he, he, was, <laughs> he was the mechanic at the shop. And what is that? I mean, this was uh, when I had a blown out tire or something. I, I came in yeah. for some stupid thing. I don't know. And, uh, your and we started talking, and this was right after he cut all his hair off, which, of course, I mean, you know, it doesn't really make a difference. But um, so I was like, well, you know, you got to put some black dye in that hair, you know, because he's like totally gray now. He's like an old man. I, I can see some roots there. It's not we, only image now, it's, it's a necessity. Yeah, so, you know, we, we gave him the black dye. He passed the audition, and uh, here we are talking to you. How many drummers did uh, you go through before? Uh, well, not through, but we, we listened to, I think, about 20 people, mm -hmm. 20 guys. Were they all from around the way in Brooklyn, yeah. all friends of yours? They were. Well, not, well some, some were in France, some were. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, Johnny happened to be the most obvious choice. Yeah, uh, same thing with a lot of bands from around the area, from Brooklyn. You guys really, you know, stay close to home and really uh, stay close to all your friends and family and everything like well, that. Well, culture to stay home close to your mama. It is. You know, it's Brooklyn culture. I mean, there's two million people live there, mm -hmm. which is more than, than I, I think, like 95% of the cities in this country, uh, at least. And I mean, you know, New York is such a great city. That's, it's just a bridge or a tunnel away, you know, to get some real excitement. Right. You know? It sounds like you guys really have like a strong bond <coughs> from where you guys come from. And well, I, like I do, but I think that uh, some of the other guys are kind of itching, you know, to get out of New York. I think they're just a little sick of the cold weather and, <laughs> you know, sick and tired of having their houses busted into. What's the deal with that, man? I'm ready to go. Where do you want to go? Uh, somewhere where I don't have to use a shovel for a very long time. Queens. <laughs> Queens. It's That's a lot warmer in Queens, I'm told. A lot, longer, a lot warmer in Long Island, though, so, ugh. But, uh, <laughs> but we just, yeah, s seriously. I mean, <laughs> you could light a runway with just like a match, holding a match up in a mall. I would love to see that. <laughs> so would I. Okay, um, let me just few more questions about your records. Um, uh, now, with the release of October Rust, which has been getting a massive exposure, and I do congratulate on all the, uh, all the exposure and all the success you've been having. Um, I, I saw actually one thing. I mean, uh, a lot of discussions that we have uh, with a lot of people on the internet and stuff like that is that, uh, you know, MTV very players plays very few um, music videos from like the style of music from like Typo and from other bands like Machine Head. That's because we are politically incorrect. Uh, yeah. And don't, and, I mean, you know, yeah. we, we eat meat, we wear fur, you know, <laughs> we, we don't recycle. We throw it in the garbage can just like everybody else. We take very long showers, and, and I make sure I take the water saver out of my shower head. Good. So, you know, once they heard that about me, it was like, fuck yeah. this guy. All right, so I heard, so you guys have one video right now on MTV, My Girlfriend's Girlfriend, which... Well, I, I must say that someone told me, someone told me, that they saw they, the Love people. You to Death video right. on... MTV last week. Probably. This is what I heard. I'm it's the MTV. News, of course. Yeah, but, you know. news. And now, how many videos? I know you had the, uh, the video for Christian Woman. We've got four videos total. Uh, and, and what happened with the other videos on uh, MTV? They just said no? They all had like really minor play. Um, Black number one got some good uh, exposure. Uh, Christian Woman, I don't think they, they knew what to think of me being in, in bed with this girl who, <laughs> who looked like she was 13 years old. I'm sure a lot of guys liked it, though. Well, I mean, <clears throat> you know, when I saw the uh, video back, I was like, man, this, this looks really bad, <laughs> you know. 
I mean, after, you know, after we did the scene, I had to change a diaper. And it's like, <laughs> this is wrong. You know, you know, just had to take her back to change my diaper, too. My uh, depends. Okay. Yeah, You're so not what? that old. You're not that old. I got some more hair, man. Oh, thanks, man. You know, uh, I'm never going to wash the sand now. Me neither. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, I don't think you did. Um, so, uh, let me ask I you. Don't touch your hand. You don't want to touch my hand. That's okay. You don't have to touch my hand. But I'm going to ask you something. Uh, first of all, uh, how long have you, have you been on, you guys been on tour? And I'll ask, direct this question to you. Actually, it's been almost a year straight now. Mm -hmm. How's touring treating you? Uh, it has its ups and downs. It has its stresses in life, just like anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you feel very uh, confined. You know, we live on a bus, and there's, you know, quite a number of us, and there really isn't. You really don't have the uh, the novelty of having your own space, so to speak, and you know. But a lot of times, it, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of good memories. There's uh, sometimes it, it can be very monotonous. You know, you, you get to you get into a, a routine, and it's like the same thing over and over again. You don't find a chance to make friends and everything. You just pack up and go. Uh, well, in this kind of business, you really have to watch out who your friends are. That's why you really should stay home, stay close to home, right? Well, I have enough friends. <laughs> okay. Um, how about you, Peter? How's uh, touring life been treating you? Well, it's it's gotten much better. I mean, uh, the first tour, like most bands, was w was done in a van. We had like you know 15 guys in a van, yeah. and uh, so that means you can't sleep when you want. You know, you, you can't eat when you want. You can't eat when you want. So it's it's not really fun, you know, for. For me, uh, I need my space. You know, when I sleep, I need absolute silence and darkness. I mean, if you know somebody's like you're playing a radio or a TV. And you grew up in Brooklyn? <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I mean, I, you know, well, that's why I really can't stand it yeah. on the road, you know, because like I'm home so much and I hear like in you know, a dog's bark and people getting stabbed outside my house. I'm like, you know, kill them some other place, please. <laughs> but um, from, you know, from that van tour, then we moved on to one bus which we thought was great because now we have all this room. And now we're really spoiled because we have two buses. We have uh, the crew bus and we have the band bus. And we actually asked the record company if each band member could have their own bus. They said no. That'll happen. <laughs> uh, they said no, uh, but they're going to give us all Yugos to tour in. They're going to give us four Yugos. Really? So. Uh, that's, that's OK. Um, uh, uh, somebody told me that uh, you can be seen many times in the Gold's Gym down in the New York area a lot working out. You've been lied to many times. I've been lied to. Oh, no. I have, I have a full gym in my apartment in, in Brooklyn. I don't ever have to leave the house except oh. to go food shopping. That's good. That's good. You can see Peter drive by Gold's Gym on his way to, on his way <laughs> to food <laughs> shopping. <laughs> right. Maybe, was actually, maybe yeah. that's what happened. You probably stopped to like, pick up something on the road or something like that. There was a gym not too far from my house that I used to work out at, but uh, some, some idiot dropped the weights on his face. <laughs> and then he uh, sued the gym, and he won. And the gym was forced to close. So, so now, because they can't get insurance, they can only sell uh, fitness equipment, which is where I, I bought everything. So they gave me like this huge break, and I have everything in my house now. Just about your life is uh, working out really one of your big regimens in life? Well, I think everyone needs something, you know, so, some kind of personal thing. You know, I know, you know uh, that the rest of the guys in, in the band have, have their own way of, you know, passing time. I like to pass my time by, you know, trying to um, improve myself in some way. What about you? I have a, I have a couple of different passions. What about your solitaire program? I, I have a strict regimen of playing at least four hours a day of solitaire on, on a computer. The, on the Windows solitaire? Yeah. No, actually, on a computer. Ken, Kenny has a, a, a laptop, and I borrow it, and it has this <laughs> solitaire game program, and I, j I put my Walkman on, and I just. I feel like walking past a fucking computer and dumping a solitaire <laughs> because he's, he's sitting there mystified. Mystified. I just, I just, actually, it, I disappear from it. It's actually quite uh, therapeutic. I just sit there, I listen, so, to, so I listen to my Walkman, and I just, it's, it's, it's. So it's your focus. Yeah, it's, yeah, I sit there. It's not really so much, you know, concentrating oh, on a stupid not. game of. He's, he's, He's got the Walkman on. He's 
playing with the computer. He's got the stereo and the TV on. <laughs> so he has. So he's really indecisive, right? Constant <laughs> sensory <laughs> input. Right. Constant. Massive sensory input in here. Next thing he needs is just like in one of those, like in a foot massages. Yeah. yeah you feel like. Well, when I'm home, that's my cats. It's no, my two cats. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and he needs like the virtual reality inputs, like on the side of his head, so he can just get massive feed. Um, where you guys? I uh, just want to ask you um, a, a lot of questions we've been getting for you guys. Um, is how do you feel about the local scene around where you guys grew up, the, the, the music around where you guys grew up? I, th I think we are totally out of touch with it. Right. I mean, you know, the, the, the last thing I want to do when I come home from tour is go to see a band. Right. Even though I did see Leibach last week. I mean, I, yeah, I've heard of my went to that. I, I almost never go to see bands because I feel like I, I am back at work. I mean, the, the last thing that a butcher wants to do is cut up meat in his own house for dinner. Right. Okay. Right. And so that's how I feel, you know, when I'm off tour. So I'm, I'm not the person to ask you know, about this scene back in New York. I don't even, th even think there is a scene. Right. How about you? Do you ever get to see any? Well, uh, in different cities and stuff. Actually, I went to go see Metallica last night. Um, this, they're really, yeah, yeah, Madison Square Garden. Actually, it's really entertaining. The show is, is yeah, I saw, I saw the it was sold out. I saw the Nassau Coliseum. Yeah, they're playing tonight also. I, I guess that's a plug for Metallica. No, <laughs> right? I doubt it. I doubt uh, it. I don't, We're, I don't think they need a plug from us. No, I don't think so. But, uh, no, I mean, one, once in a while, you know, if, if there's a, a show of, of a band that I like, you know, I'll, I'll try to go see it. Um, as far as the scene, I don't think there really is. I mean, I know CBGB's is open. And there's a couple of clubs in Manhattan. There's nothing in Brooklyn. If that's what you're well, I just meant like the area, the area, the area, the area. A few more questions before we go, but uh, one thing I want to ask you is, uh, in uh, your day-to-day -day routines, you know, while you're out touring and out there, uh, what are just some of your hobbies that you like to do? You know, he's got his windows and he's got his uh, solitaire. What about you? Well, um, I can pretty much document each each day. Uh, we usually pull into the next city around 10 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. check uh, check into the hotel, take showers, shave, uh, do some interviews, try to find a laundromat. Then we leave for sound check around 3 or 4 o'clock. After sound check, I work out. Sometimes there's more interviews. Sometimes, uh, if there's not, I'll take a nap or um, putz around with my little keyboard and uh, try to make the record company even richer. Is that one of the other aficionados uh, playing keyboard? Well, I mean, it's, I, I looked at it, you know, from a logical point of view, you know, just to figure out harmonies and stuff, and it's got a little drum machine on it. So when I come up with a tune that I think sounds okay, I'll uh, show it to the band to see what they think. And that's how a lot of your songs come out? Virtually all of them lately, mm. just from a little uh, Casio keyboard. Uh, you're speaking out your daily routine. Um, have you found you guys, you guys have been accepted in uh, more certain areas of the world than uh, others? Like, what are the places in the world that you find you have, like, the greatest following? Well, I mean, I, I can't say that, that, that we do badly anywhere, yeah. but it seems like we're... But you have your problems in some, some areas where... Well, it's, it's funny you should say that because uh, the one place that we had problems uh, five or six years ago was Germany, and now we, we do really, really well there, and I mean really well. Europe, Europe takes in these kinds of bands a lot more than the uh, United States. Okay, just to wrap up, um, where are you guys, where is Typo headed for the next uh, year? Johnny, Johnny's going for that. Johnny's, go for that, Johnny. Well, this tour goes until uh, tax day, April 15th. No, we get home the day before. The day before. The right. day before. Then we're, uh, we're off to Europe again. We're going to be doing a, a tour of the UK. Uh, all promoting October Rust. Oh, yeah, this is all in promotion of October Rust. After that, it should take us to, like, the last week of May. And we were going out for, like, six weeks with Ozzy on the OzFest. Oh, great show. And then after that, I really have no idea. That, takes us, that takes us into July. Yeah, are you guys ever going to, like, just take a vacation and chill out before you go head back into the studio? I hope so. Um, but I don't think, you know, with the way, the way that we have to work, I don't think that's going to be possible for quite some time.